Nico is no doubt one of the best riflers to ever play connector on Mirage. When looking at his stats on GG Predict during the major, Nico averaged a CT rating of 10.7 compared to Leech where he's averaging a 6.1. Hey, I'm Smokey and today I want to have a look at Nico and how he plays Connector on Mirage. But before we begin, a quick word from our sponsor, GG Predict. If you play CSGO, you gotta try ggpredict.io. It's a training platform to analyze and better understand how you play and what mistakes you make during your Counter-Strike matches. Then, effectively train those aspects that need improvement. You can use it to improve literally every aspect of your game. Team play, nades, pace of your game, or your aim. It not only analyzes your game in so many aspects, but also lets you train on the platform thanks to personalized training plans. How? GG Predict's AI knows exactly what you need to do to become a better player. Each week, you automatically get tailor-made trainings made by the best CSGO athletes who work with GG Predict. It's easy and fun, and you can train right on GGP servers and get all the data from your trainings analyzed. Simply connect your Steam, Face It, or Esportal account and get your matches instantly analyzed by GG Predict. We almost forgot, if you're playing just for fun, that's great too. You'll love our social features which allow you to compare with your friends and finally check who really is carrying the team. Let me show you Nico's pathing and what he does before he goes to Connector. At the start of the round when he's going through A, he likes to go through CT and he will Molotov ramp for his A player. He'll do this by coming out, aiming at this red roof and left click throwing. And this Molotov will block vision from the T's to allow him to cross and let his A player have an extra Molotov for later in the round. From the T's POV, the Molotov will pop on the eye level, making it really difficult to spot Nico crossing. Once again, Nico's coming towards connector, he's gonna throw the exact same Molotov and this Molotov will help him cross towards connector safely. Now let me show you how Nico plays towards connector. I'm going to show you some examples where Nico will use his smoke, such as when it's 130 or there's pressure towards mid. I'm going to show you the different angles that Nico takes towards mid. I'm going to show you some of Nico's aggression in connector. And lastly, I'll show you what will happen if there's nothing towards mid. Generally, Nico will try to smoke connector at 130 if there's no pressure. So in this round, we can see he's going to come from jungle to connector. He's going to start juggling it. Then around 130, he's going to throw his smoke and peek towards top mid. And by Nico throwing the smoke at 130, it will delay the connector take from the T's. And in this round at 117, he's going to throw the smoke against Entropic, which will keep the T's out after one minute, which is very reasonable for the CT side. Now let's have a look at some pressure towards mid. In this round, we can see NIP through a connector Molotov, and Nico's going to fall back and start juggling it. If Nico decides to smoke it straight away, we can see in the minimap that there are no T's towards mid, so if Nico uses smoke when the Molotov landed, he's pretty much wasting it. And because there's no pressure towards mid, he's going to hold on to it. And by doing these jiggles, it will help G2 understand where they think NIP will go. And against Heroic, when Nico comes towards Connector, they feel a window smoke and the throwing flashes towards mid, so this indicates to Nico that it's pressure towards mid and they might be something fast. So to counter any play, he's going to smoke it off. He's going to hide behind this smoke very cleverly, and when Heroic tries to burst through that smoke, they're not going to expect Nico on the other side of it. In this example, Nico's towards connector, he's going to flash over mid and he's going to jump spot connector like this. By jump spotting, it can be really difficult for the Gs to hit you. However, in one of his jump peaks, he's going to spot Foster, cross him. So as a reaction, he's going to smoke off connector to delay their tick. Now let me show you some of the angles that Nico will take towards connector. If Nico feels it's going to be a short rush, Nico can smoke the bottom of connector and then play this angle next to stairs. From this position, he's able to catch any T's crossing towards short, and from the T's POV, when they try to clear short, they're going to get shot in the back. Of course, you have the common angle in connector where you can see towards top mid. It's worth noting this angle is really common. However, if you throw a good smoke, it should be able to cover a lot of your body, allowing you to have a visual advantage. But do play this angle at your own risk. In this round, we can see Nico is going to throw his smoke towards the left side, and this will allow him to walk across the right side of connector, and peek towards under. This angle is really powerful, as from under you can't even spot Nico. So at times the T's will need to pre-fire or fight back by following your traces. Now let me show you some of Nico's aggression. In this round, Hunter and Nico are going to play towards connector. Nico is going to smoke off Khan. Amonex is going to throw a flashbang through Khan. And when they swing, they're going to swing together. So if Nico dies, Hunter can trade. However, they don't see anyone mid, so they're going to fall back towards it. In this round against NIP, they're going to do the exact same aggressive play, but unfortunately Rez is going to play anti-flash and we'll get them both. Oh. 
Last life, there's nothing towards mid. Nico can play towards A slash stairs and start juggling for information. In this run, Amanek doesn't see anything in mid, so Nico will mortal palace to prevent any rushes. He will set up his crosshair to peak ramp, and when he feels like he's safe, he's gonna throw this HE. And this HE is actually gonna land pretty deep inside a ramp, so if there are any T's lurking or getting ready to rush onto the A bomb site, they're gonna take a lot of damage. And in this round, we can see NIP are on a full eco. So if a nade did land on one of the NIP players, they're going to be hurting badly. When you're playing Mirage on Connector, it's really important to have that control. So in G2, some of his teammates have a few smokes that he can use to support Nico. In this round, Nico is going to cover for Amanek by playing Window. Amanek is going to come towards A and he's going to smoke a bomb Connector. And he does this because he wants to make the T's think that there's someone playing Connector and someone playing Window to try and delay the mid take. This also allows Nico to keep his smoke. However, later on, he's going to rotate all the way towards window. The smoke is going to fade suit, so Hunter is going to use this lineup by aiming at the door, aiming here, and jump throwing. And this will re-smoke his connector. So maybe around the one minute mark, Nico can re-smoke connector and have it for a longer period, which makes it really difficult for the T's to split or execute onto the A-bomb site. Another lineup that Hunter uses is this one right here. If he goes next to these bricks, aims roughly here, and left click throws, this smoke will take a while to land. However, it will land at the bottom of connector. As mentioned previously, at times Nico will need to cover for Amanek by playing Window. At the start of the round, he's going to come towards Window. And in this round, Entropic's not going to have any mid pressure. So Nico's going to jump down and play Bomb Connector. And he does this because it can be a really difficult angle for the T's to clear. Once again, Nico's playing Window and Amanek wants to go to Connector. And you can see in this round, Entropic throws a top mid smoke. So to try and clear out mid, he's going to mount up the boxes. And this will force out any T's into the open for Amanek to kill. And we can see in this round, he has a HE pulled. And Nico will throw this nade when Amanek gets contact to allow him to retreat. Then as he falls back, he's going to have a quick peek towards underpass for information. Once again, Nico's coming towards window and Heroic is going to smoke him off. So Nico's going to put his crosshair perfectly in the same spot before he was smoked off. And then he will start shooting to see if he can get any free kills or any damage. To counter the window smoke, Nico can run and throw this Molotov, and the purpose of this Molotov is to use the T's window smoke as a one way, and this will allow him to have a visual advantage as it's difficult to see him, and allow him to get easy information. In the same game against Heroic, we can see Nico is going to do something similar. He's going to throw the Molotov, however the T's are not going to smoke it off. So as a result, he can't peek towards window and he's mollied off. Heroic will then re it, however Kayden is going to get sloppy, he's going to move towards short with his AWP, and he doesn't clear Nico. Soon as Nico gets that kill, Heroic knows that the connector player is playing window, and this may give an opportunity for Tessa to sneak by. So as soon as Nico gets that kill, he's gonna rotate towards jungle to try and block Tessa's off, and from this position, he can hold window and jungle. In round 19, Nico is gonna be smoked off, and if you pay attention to his crosshair placement, he's aiming towards his light source. And he's doing this because if any T's were trying to go through the smoke, their body will block the light source, indicating to Nico that there's someone going through it, and he can have the information and he can try and go for the kill if he wanted. Against NIP, Nico is going to be using the similar tactic. He's going to be looking towards the light source to see if anyone's going to cross. However, the smoke is going to fade and he's going to still remain in this position. And it's important to note in this position is that when the T's try to go through window, which is a really difficult fight for the NIP player to take. And not only that, if one of the ninjas tried to go through window, the barrel will stick out before the enter window, giving Nico a favorable advantage. Something else I want to touch on is Nico's regression towards mid and his crosshair placement. As Nico's coming towards mid, he's going to be super diligent with his crosshair placement and how he retakes mid. He places his crosshair onto the door, then swinging out to the left, he doesn't have to move his crosshair a single bit, and it's perfectly on point where T would usually play if they're peeking towards window. He will then peek towards short to clear if any T's are trying to go up short or peek towards connector. He will perfectly move his crosshair towards top mid before clearing the boxes and then clearing bucket. And since he's clear mid, he can come to his teammates, it's likely going to be an execute towards a site, and that they should be ready. If you want to check out more about Nico's playstyle, King T made a really good video that you should check out, showcasing Nico's crosshair placement and his playstyle and all of his little tricks. Lastly, Nico wants to retake top mid, however he's going to get support from his teammates. In this round, Nexus is playing towards triple, he's going to flash above connector, Nico will peek off it and will get a nice double kill on two of the Entropic players, leaving it in a 5v3. However, he's not done there. He wants to regress with Jax this time. So Jax is going to throw his own flash, and they're both going to peek off it. Let me show you how Nico plays towards jungle. As a connector player, once you lost mid control, usually you're going to retreat towards jungle or stairs. And maybe on some occasions, like I showed previously, he may play towards window. In this round, he's going to play a similar angle, where he's going to hide towards jungle and look towards the smoke. 
However, it's worth noting in this round, he doesn't have the light source to his advantage. Once again, Nico's playing towards jungle, he's going to hold a similar angle, and he's going to catch Hampus' arm sticking out. So when Hampus goes to peek, Nico's going to tear right through him, and as the T's know that Nico's the connector player, they may try to rush him, so he's going to Molotov connector to make sure they can't go for that trade. In this round, Nico's holding towards the window, and Heroic are going to try and push onto the A bomb site through connector. So in this round, Nico's going to get smoked off, and instead of fumbling with his utility or doing nothing, he's going to leave his cross in a good position. So when he gets smoked off, he's able to spam through it and try and get some damage and try and deactivate the momentum from Heroic. So when he starts spamming, he's going to get a kill onto Shush, deal some damage towards Refresh, who run out bullets, and it will fall back towards window. And it's actually really important what Nico did here. As Nico ran out of bullets, the T's could actually just rush through the smoke and kill him. So as soon as Nico runs out of bullets, he's going to reposition and pull out his sidearm. So if the T's rush through the smoke, he's ready for any kills. On some occasions, Nico may play this off angle right here. If the T's weren't prepared for this off angle or they didn't flash or check him, likely Nico could get an easy kill and fall back towards jungle where he's safe. However, against Entropic, they're going to full blind Nico and Crowd will go for the pick and get an easy kill onto him. So you do need to consider the risk before playing this angle. On some occasions, Nico will play towards stairs instead of jungle. From this position, you're able to watch Palace. You can hear information from Con or mid, and if it is an AXQ, it can be really easy to assist because you're pretty much already at the bomb site. In this round, he's towards stairs and he's going to be watching his A player's Palace. Because of this, Nexa doesn't have to worry about someone coming in from behind and flanking him. We can see in this round he's going to come towards stairs, he'll throw a quick HE, he'll jiggle it, then he'll fall back towards con. So for Nico tends to do quite a bit, if there's ever top con smoke from the T's, it tends to bloom out and can allow the T's to either look out towards jungle or stairs. Against NIP, NIP through the top con smoke, and Nico's going to be playing anti-flash. Then as the smoke starts to fade, he starts placing his crosshair in positions where he thinks the ninjas could be, and get the information for his team. In this game against Heroic, Heroic will throw the top con smoke, and they're going to try and go through this. However, since Nico's going to play anti-flash once again, he's going to dodge the flashbang, and he does this perfectly as he gets a double kill onto Tessus and Stan. Nico also knows that the last guy's towards connector, so he's going to get ready. He knows it's an opus, so he's going to start juggling with his barrel to see if he can keep Cadian's attention, or maybe shoot a shot. Because Nico's messing with Cadian, Cadian's attention is fully towards Nico, and as you're going to see, Hunter's going to come in from the back and shoot him in the back of the head. There are some occasions where Nico will play the A bomb site instead of playing towards connector or window. Commonly, he will do this when he thinks it's going to be an A execute. So, for Nico and Nexa to be on that A bomb site, it can make it a lot easier to hold it. He then decides to place himself behind default and watch towards Palace. So, by Nico watching Palace and Nexa watching Tetris, it's impossible for the T's to lurk out and try and catch timing. We can see in this round, Heroic are going to try and set up a flashbang for Shush to peek. And the power of this spot is that when the flash does goes off, he's able to crouch and Shush can't see his head. If Shush stayed out to try and take the fight, it would be a higher risk for him and likely result in his death, so he's forced to go back. After Shush retreats, Nico is going to reposition, so if Heroic did try to execute onto the A-bomb site, he's not going to be caught sitting in the same spot he was previously. An alternative angle you might want to take towards default is this one right here, and I haven't actually really seen this angle used that much. So this off angle could be super powerful in catching a T off guard, if they were trying to look out. And in this round, Nexa is going to be watching towards ramp. Another setup you could do is Nexa playing ramp and Nico playing this position right here, right in front of Palace. This spot can be pretty common, however roughly only Nico's shoulders and head will be showing, giving him a favourable advantage. However Nexa and Nico want to push ramp, so Nico's going to smoke up Palace, he's going to join Nexa and they're going to push it together. Once they clear ramp, they have a feeling it's not going to be an A execute, and Nico's going to rot it off towards mid. And Nico and Nexa also showcase more aggression on A. In this round, Nico's gonna mort off ramp, and both Nico and Nexa are gonna jump in towards Palace. Nico's gonna run straight in, he's gonna wide swing, and he's gonna catch Hampus off guard. Now they got the advantage, both Nico and Nexa can fall back towards the A bomb site and play the 4v5. Nico and Nexa also tried to do something similar against Shush, however, when they went to go to push, Shush is gonna hit a nice spray onto both of them. After watching several of Nico's demos, I can say he has great utility usage. Whenever he throws his utility, he will do it with great timing and reasoning. For example, he's Molotov towards ramp. He's proactive. Whenever the T's are making a play, he doesn't sit there and do nothing. For example, he may retake an area or spam some smokes. And lastly, he's really difficult to play against. Due to his skills and role, Nico plays a key area of the map where the T's must face him if they want to get past and continue with their call. Apart from that, thank you for watching the video. If you want to check out more content from myself, feel free to check the link from my channel in the description. If you want to watch more videos from Not Out, 
I definitely recommend hitting that subscribe button. Perhaps you want to know how to rush B in your pistol like Spirit on Dust 2? Well, I made a video which you can check out on my Twitter in the link in the description. Shout out to GD Predict for the sponsor. Thanks for watching. See you in a bit.